Tim. Let me know when you got it queued up. Oh, I'm already ready already. <laughs> of course you are. All right. Uh, here's looking at the next hour with you. Hello! Hi. <laughs> my name is oh, look Tammy. At, look at and me this leaving is my the mouse friend. in the center. Tammy! Tammy, yeah, this... This was some kind of amazing. <laughs> the song is so infectious. Oh, I know. It's... it's... Yeah, it made its way through YouTube like wildfire. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Tem understand. Also, I look to Tem. And then breaks out in hives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Tim. Very famous. Very. <laughs> you did that so backwards. What was that? You did it backwards. Oh. <laughs> you were supposed to start from the left. Oh, well, there you go. So they're all supposed to be Tammy until I hit Until Bob. you hit Bob. You're like, Hi, of I'm Tammy. Tammy. This is my friend Tammy. Hi, I'm Bob. This song is so cute. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Us <laughs> Tams have a deep history. Tem pay for college. No, colleague. Oh. Colleague. By oh, the yeah. way, it is very beneficial to send Tem to colleague. I don't have that much gold. <laughs> I guess I just go grind that. <laughs> you know I'm on that Tem for college colleague grind. Mm-hmm. Because if you send Tem to Kaleg, Tem rewards you. Of course Tem rewards me. By selling you Temmy armor. Of course she does. All of the Temmy flakes are the same. I know, I just bought them all differently anyways. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I like, I like how the uh, confirm or or refuse is like, yeah, yeah, and no, why, why? Um, but yeah, one of the interesting things about Temi armor is that the price drops depending on how often you game drops over. What? I said the interesting thing about Temi armor is that the price drops depending on how often you game over. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah, I'd recommend maybe upping your gain a bit. Looks like you're cutting out a bit more than usual. You just got to deal with it. Oh, this got interesting. I was like, wait, what? So I flirted that, because that's what I remember it happening in the beginning. Oh yeah, the the mold talls. Yeah, the mold tall finally showed up. Mold big. <laughs> yeah. I liked unhugging it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn how to chase Twiddle. Oh my god, okay, cool. <laughs> so here I am figuring all this nonsense out again. Yeah, but isn't it worth it? Something like that. It's so pretty. Like, this would be a cool, like... Like, if you had a really, like, artistic kid or whatever, and, like, they wanted to have their room all fancy looking, you could have this on, like, the ceiling of a kid's room. So instead of, like, those little sticky, like... Like, plastic glow-in-the-dark stars, you'd have this. Yeah. Pretty cool. Like, it, like you could cool, do cool patterns and stuff like that. That'd be fun.
Yay! I'm so bad at this. <laughs> I think I get better with these ones, but uh, I don't remember exactly. That uh, sure has, yeah, they don't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> So what to expect in this upcoming hour is much of the same whenever I end up having to fight a boss battle. <laughs> and trust me, if I'm bad at this, I'm bad at boss battles. <laughs> oh. At least it's a fun one. Lecture way out of the screen. They just go try to explore a little bit. Yeah, in the wrong direction. <laughs> in the wrong direction. Much like the uh, circle in X based puzzles, I think I eventually stumble upon the correct answer here. Man, the fact that, the, that my cursor is still on the screen bothers me. <laughs> so dumb. I always do it too, I always forget to move it. See, I just have the setting checked off to that it doesn't show the mouse. Yeah, I know, I should probably just do that. Wow, I'm almost dead. Oh god, do I die here? Okay, good. <laughs> I unhug you. Slime sounds. I think <laughs> I might die here. I got very close Ugh. to it. Yeah, I think I remember freaking out right about there. Like, I do not need a game over right now. And then back to Tammy Village. I love Tim. I thought that was a mouse hole. I went to check. <laughs> it, it was not. No. When I no, wait, uh, uh, I see a thing. I finally figured it out. Did I get the text? <laughs> I think it was a text from Monty I got when we uploaded the last part. <laughs> and all it said was, I don't like the way Josh said Black Omen. <laughs> wow, really? I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was great. Yeah. It made me laugh. There's a little editor's note for you. Oh, I'm sure there are plenty. <laughs> I only imagine that it uh, it takes a lot for him to not make this, to not make any of his productions turn into what he normally produces for the channel. And if you watch our videos, you know what I'm talking about. I, I literally went to Timmy Village to get healed, and I'm walking out with, like, half health. How mm -hmm. did I do that? This sounds like a creepy lullaby. You get that vibe? Yeah, I can see that. Oh, this area is fun. I think I kind of figured it out, too. And I didn't actually test it out, but my theory is, is as long as you don't brighten the area up, you don't get attacked. Because I noticed I was more likely to be attacked when it was bright. Because, like, I remember the little sign saying that they use the lights to guide them. But I could be wrong. I don't actually know. Right? Like I said, I didn't test it, but I feel like it's probably right. I'm pretty sure they could attack you either way. I mean, it might just be... I wouldn't say, like, I was invulnerable to attacks, but I think it was more, like, less likely to be random encountered. Like I said, I could be wrong. Yeah. I always suck at that.
Mlem. Which I, assume, which I assume is the sound you make when you eat a tummy plate. The uh, description for tummy flakes. Uh huh. It's just construction paper. <laughs> of course it is. What a wonderful addition to an already kooky game. <laughs> This was me making sure there wasn't another Temi village I missed. For the person in me who is like, oh, I just want to get to the next area, I want to do the next thing, these random encounters are brutal because you can't really speed your way past them. Like, in any other RPG in which you were just trying to kill everything and move on, you could just, you know, spam auto attacks and get it done. But, like, with this, I can't. Like, I can't just murder these guys because I'm trying to be a pacifist. Mm -hmm. I can't be after killing my own mother. And not my own mother, but someone closely, closely resembling such. Your mother-like figure. Yeah. This area is so bizarre. I think at this point I stopped lighting it up and just kind of going with it. Because I think when I was playing it, I could still kind of see the path. Mm-hmm. So, I think I just kind of figured it out. Yeah, in the game window, the path is still slightly visible. Right. I think I was just checking for anything I might have missed. Any hidden secrets? No. Nope. I was like, uh-oh. This is all action. Ugh. I was like, ooh. I was like, are you kidding me? Behind I'm like, oh. you. I'm like, oh, it's going down? I'm like, this is about to go down now. Uh-oh. It's funny because... Did we make the? Were they always monsters, or did we make? Did we make them that way? Um, <laughs> I think. I mean, there was there were wars in the beginning, right? I, I I think canonically, aside from you know monster just being a name to use for them, I think canonically we were equals at one point. Right. Yeah, you know, not necessarily equal in power, but equal in stature. Right. And, you know, something got in the way. Poor kid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it, to that. It, it gets so much worse. Those flowers are a real great, like, storytelling feature. Oh, yeah. conversation. Ugh. That can mean so many things. And this scene. And what it means is up to you. I know, that's basically what I got from the old man, the old kooky dude or whatever he was. Tortoise? Yeah. This was hard for me. So, I sit at this conversation piece for a good while thinking about it. Because I'm like, oh god, what do I do? I mean, think about it though. Please make me hate you. It's rough. 
And I was sitting here just gobstruck, just like, I don't know how do I respond to this. And like, yeah, I said yes. And then it's just, it, it amounts to nothing, essentially. And in fact, it's more probably like it reminded him of his sister. So it's like, it's familial. It's like not even mean to him. It was endearing, if anything. And then I was freaking out by this point. And then I freaked out more. Now I gotta wonder, what if I just left him? Um, and then I sniffled here. I kind of got the sniffles, not going to lie. Like that gave me the warm fuzzies. Such a randomly sweet, endearing moment. And it made the conversation we had last time all the more prevalent to me. The fact that he's just a nice kid. Mm hmm. Like, I really liked him. Like, I, I still really like him. Once again, not really knowing what to think or do with that whole last situation that just occurred. See, and one of the things that... One of the things that strikes me is... You know, the, the, the affection, the emotion that you're starting to feel... You know, th that I've been feeling made the genocide run that much harder. I, I can completely understand. Also, this is the moment when I fell in love with Undyne. Isn't it, though? Because I saw this, I'm like, that's like my next D&D &D character right there. Like, this is like a super cool character, like completely and utterly. to do good by her people. She's she is not a bad person. She's a paladin. She's a paladin, exactly. She's protecting her people and doing her best to do right by them. You now, just because she doesn't meet our standards of what is good and righteous doesn't make her bad. That would have been my poster right there. Is this image with her saying a knight in shining armor has appeared. Or arrived, or whatever the word was. I was like, yes, let's go. So. Good job. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, we'll see over under on how many times it takes me to figure this one out. Uh, I'm going to say about a dozen times. I don't know how off you're going to be, but we'll find out. This was a pretty cool mechanic, though. You know, I didn't figure that one you. out. <laughs> Yes, welcome to the D&D &D section. Or, or, 
the DDR section rather. This definitely messed me up a tad bit. so bad at this. I get better because you get the pattern, but even then, once you learn the pattern, it's still it's not enough half the time. Eventually, you get to the point where you can manipulate her, and she'll speed up her attacks, and sometimes it gets to the point where the bullets match the timing of the song. You walked into it. I did not see that coming, dude. <laughs> now, look, you can't get mad at me for missing, for getting hit by the first one. You can get mad at me for getting hit by the next six. Because <laughs> that's going to happen. I don't learn my lesson for a good long time. The song is so good. But yo, for real, she would make an, an awesome D&D character. Like, uh, I guess you couldn't do it like a half orc. Uh... Yeah, that. that, oh, that... I, I'm sure there are sanguine monsters. Oh, yeah. That threw me off. <laughs> you were saying? Oh, yeah. But you can't, like. I would love to do, like, some monstrous paladin character who just cares about protecting, like, their homeland or something like that. Like, goblins from a cave. Yo, Monty, and let's get that one. Let's get that game over counter going. We're gonna need oh, it. Trust me, we're gonna need it. <laughs> so good. Oh, really? I just realized something. Hmm. She says no more running away. Yep. <sighs> Spoiler alert. You don't fight her. Ever. You just escape. Yep. But now I feel bad for bringing that up so early on in the video because we got a ways to go before I figure that out. <laughs> to be fair, they do a good job of like... The me me mechanical design for this game is, for at least for me, has so far been, here's a new mechanic, here's a new thing going on, grind it out until you realize something's not working, and then start thinking, okay, what can I do? And you start going through some of your other options to figure out what you can do, and that's basically how I've gotten through most of the major mechanical changes in this game. I walked into that one again. <laughs> but like, <laughs> like I did it with... Papyrus, I did it, and oh my god, that's that's the crux. That was the very first lesson I learned in this game. The very first hard-earned lesson in this game was just how to learn how to fight a boss. Because when I learned how to fight a boss the first time, I lost. And I won yeah. that fight, but I lost. And so from that point on, I realized... Oh, sometimes I have to figure out how not to lose, how not to win. So that's kind of been, been sort of the story of all my boss fights from that point on, especially this one where I just kind of keep doing the same thing until I realize what I'm doing wrong, or at least what else I can do. Still eat top. You're getting the arrows, which, you know, bravo, but... Oh, this one messes me up. Like, when it gets super fast, I'm like, oh, no, no. The whole time I'm doing that, like, like, dodgy arrow one, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is one I shouldn't mess up, but I eventually messed up a bunch on. There's... There's two ways of handling the spike pit, as I call it. Um, 
Oh yeah, by the way, sneak attack. <laughs> um, there is like literally one pixel between I, the second and third uh, spears. I tried it on the first and second. Cause I thought like maybe I could fit there and I didn't. But I, that's yeah, what I it's thought. The second I thought, and third. I thought there was a that you could maybe fit in between them, but I never actually pulled it off. Look at how bad I do. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that takes some getting used to. But like I said, this is my favorite boss fight. It's such a good one. That was an easy one. Still haven't noticed it yet, and I won't for a while. Of course, I haven't shown up yet. And that's what tips me off, is I finally notice it. And like I said, I won't see it for a while, and in fact, it still hasn't shown up. But when I do, I'm like, oh. There. It finally shows up, and I don't notice it. Oof. <laughs> that should have killed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My last resort. And it's like, oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, how did that not kill me? Yep, there it is. Number two. Our fates rest on you. Mm-hmm. Huh. I have a theory, but I don't want to ask it. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to Go it. Go ahead. I, I, I won't answer either way, so... I'll, I'll leave it... Yeah, I guess then. Maybe you didn't fall into the pit that led you to the underground. I mean, they never they just say you tripped and fell in, but maybe you didn't trip and fall in. Who knows? We'll find out, I suppose. Uh that's where my mind just went now. Like looking at it after the fact, not distracted by how awesome this fight is and how bad I'm at how bad I am at fighting it. You could have done a whole game on Undyne. Probably. Like I would totally like read an episodic adventure of Undyne and her tr and like how she became who she is and you know what's important to her and why and how she's driven to you know do all of that like I would love to read that I always get fascinated by side characters and adventures anyways hey I dodged one yeah, that's what happened to me in Game of Thrones. I got really fascinated with a side character. And it was honestly, I got fascinated with the idea of a side comment that one of the characters made in Game of Thrones. And I got fascinated with that. I always, I always get interested in like just, just side characters that have really interesting you know, developments to them. That, to be fair, it's not like the main character in this game is totally uh, interesting. And to be fair, I think you're meant to more uh, embody Frisk more than anything else. But, uh, you know, there's still plenty of game to see. Oh! <laughs> did he... I'm assuming Toby Fox did all the music, too, huh? I don't remember who the composers were. I know Toby Fox used a lot of his own music, but I don't know if he was the only composer. God, this really is an impressive game. It does a very good job of masking how impressive it is. It, like, because it doesn't want you to ask the questions of like, wow, how long did this take to make, or who made it? You're just really into the story. But it is really impressive. Musically and design-wise, a lot of passion went into this. You can tell. 
Oh, absolutely. It's like eating organic food versus like, you know, store-bought processed stuff. You can tell the difference. You know, you say that, but that's not always the case. <laughs> In my experiences, it has been. Yeah, fair enough. There's, there's and the fake out. There's places I've gone that I know, like I've talked to the owners and they specifically like say, yeah, I make sure to go out and get the best organic foods I can get for what I'm making. And you can definitely tell, like the flavor in their food is so much more, it's just better. I'm not saying that's gonna work across the board, but in the right hands and in the right, in the right setting and in the right, you know, recipes, you definitely can, you can tell the difference. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because there's actually a story that that's three. There's actually a story that I have where I went to a restaurant and the person I was with ordered some food and it was like a meatball, but you could taste like explicitly that there was Vienna sausage in it. Oh, wow. And it's like, oh god, no, why? Right? And, you know, we, you know, called over a manager and, you know, had a little bit of a complaint and he swore up and down that they didn't use Vienna sausage. But, you know, I, I ate Vienna sausage for months when I was deployed. I know what Vienna sausage tastes like. Why I won't eat Vienna sausage anymore. Right. <laughs> I can tell when there's Vienna sausage. And he's like, stop lying to me, you know? Right. Because it's very easy for bad restaurants to do that. That's some, like, Gordon Ramsay kitchen nightmare stuff. Yeah. I think it's harder to tell how food is made better by organic ingredients than it is then it is as easy to tell when food is made worse because of really bad ingredients. <laughs> bad food's easy to tell. Good food does... It's like the difference between, you know, like a temper... It's, it's like... In order to get a food from, like, 80% good to, like, 90% good is, like, maybe, a Like a 20 to $30 difference. But in order to get that 90 to 100%, it's like a $100 difference. Well, see, part of the problem with that, you know, it's kind of like what you were saying. It's not a linear, you know, growth. Right. You know? Yeah, you can have, you know, a $5 can like of fish eggs, but... <laughs> But, you know, if you spend $100 on caviar, it's going to be a massive difference. Right. And the whole roundabout point we're trying to make here is that I believe that the development of this game made that extra 10 for that pushed the boundaries exponentially to get it to the state it's in. <laughs> anyway, short story long. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say, is that this game definitely put in that extra 10% at the end, that harder, exponentially more difficult task of adding that flavor and that character to this game that is missing in so many games. God, you're so bad at this. I am what you might call the worst. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Albuquerque... So I still haven't figured it out yet, as most people can tell. I love how I'm just, den you know, denying the, uh, the inevitable here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I like how that one never gets me. I get that messes me up so bad. <laughs> All you have to do is go in a circle. You'd think. <laughs> Still haven't noticed it. It's 
Still haven't noticed it. I think one of the things I've learned from the last couple of boss fights is that I don't think there's ever a, a way of just like, oh, if I keep not dying, I'll get past it. I think no matter what happens, I've got to figure out the key. Because eventually, it's, I don't think it'll ever be, oh, well, you survived this long, I'm going to let you go. I don't think that's going to happen. See, and the reason it's not going to happen is that Undyne has a motivation specifically to kill you. Right. So, she's not going to let you go. She can't afford to let you go. Yeah, no, that's... You know, if only I looked into it that deeply this early on, but no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Got a got a got a got. Nope. Nope. Uh, that oh. was a cool dog. Oh. I got to admit. <laughs> nope. There it is. Ooh. Crunch. Was that four now? That would be four. Do -do 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 -do. I think at this point I have my head in my arms, or my head, my head in my hands now. Just like, oh, oh. with all the force of a great typhoon, with all the strength of a raging fire, mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Back in. <coughs> See, and the part that's frustrating for me is that you're dealing with this with Undyne, and, you know, in, in, in the genocide run, there's two fights that matter. Two fights that are actual fights. And they're both measurably more difficult than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, I mean, and the thing is, I've been through this route. I've been through this fight. I've been in that exact same situation that you just talked about. You know, head in your hand, sighing with exasperation, getting tired, getting frustrated, getting worked up, losing over and over and over, and then finally winning. And you get that catharsis. And you get that, 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 that moment of victory. Which, granted, with Undyne is a little bit different because of, you know, what you do to win, but... You know, whenever I, whenever I get to doing that, you know, whenever the brain cells in my brain decide to activate... There it is! I wonder if I notice it this time. But with the Genocider out, you don't get that moment. No. I am, no, and I imagine each one weighs on you more and more. I, 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 refu I I'm not going to ask too many questions about the genocide run because I want to see it and see if my ideas are correct. That's why I'm kind of like hesitant to talk about it because I know. The more I say, the more I'm going to want to say. Right, and it would be way, it would be way better to wait and watch it as that run goes down. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, hell, if you've made it this far in the in the Undertale series, let's go all the way. Okay, I think I figure out pleading. But I don't even know if there's a measurable difference between pleading and challenging. There is. Like, specifically. There is. Pleading slows it down, and challenging speeds it up. Is there a... I hesitate to say benefit to speeding it up, or is it just like... With one without the other? Swag. Oh, for swag? Okay, got it. Swag. For the speedrun? For all those frames? No, just swag. <laughs> you don't even say frames. If anything, it costs you frames. Just do the extra motions. 
<laughs> and then, of course, you know, getting hit. Right. Yep, yep. <laughs> Messed all that up. Is this as sweet as you? You think I... I just... I'm not fast enough to figure that out. <laughs> I wonder if this is designed to teach us sort of somewhat moral lesson. Um, I don't know. I mean, think about it. What is the one thing they teach you in school about fights? What are you supposed to do when someone you know, is acting aggressive? I mean, of course, I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> right. But I, I wonder if it's meant to sort of reinforce that kind of lesson. funny because now even modern ideas of conflicts and conflict resolutions that at a certain level that even goes out the window. Uh... Oh. Man, I'm so bad at figuring this out. <laughs> I wondered if there's, like, any sort of meaning or ideas behind, like, all the little different things that they do. Like, when they say she smashes spears on the ground, or... Or is looking around to see if this is a prank. I wonder if there's anything behind that specifically, or is it just flavor? Um, or I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's just flavor. Like, I wonder if it, like, will help and help, like, if it, it signifies, like, what the next attack is gonna be, kind of. I wonder if there's any, if there's anything like that. Like when they say one thing, uh, it could mean that this attack is coming out. Smells like angry fish. <laughs> I like how sometimes it smells like angry fish and other times it smells like sushi. Oh goodness. Yeah, like every other section that you encounter her, the longer you go, the faster she gets. Right. Alright. Which is supposed to t teach you the lesson of the longer you get go out quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you're not designed to get you're not you're not going to outrace her. She does have a speed cap, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> Too fast. No, I never stuck around long enough to find out. Oh yeah, well that must have been nice figuring that out quickly. <laughs> I figured it out. I'm like, wait. I still spared her. I'm like, maybe challenging her does something? Okay, maybe I didn't figure it out yet. I'm like, maybe if I challenge her, it'll be better than than pleading with her. All right, that didn't do anything. Keep challenging her? I'm going for the swag run right now. What's happening? Undertale swag percent. <laughs> I would not surprise me if there's actually a run for that. There's not. We'll make it. <laughs> How? <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, I can move? Oh. Okay, well. You know. <laughs> Alright. Nope. I gotta do it three in a row and sparing, maybe? I don't know. Why is it not popping off? Because you're green. Oh, you can't move when you're green. Oh, look at me learning things so far. Like, no, 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 no. That makes a lot of sense now. And now you start off red. 
And I didn't flee because I didn't see it right away. I didn't think it was going to be there because I never made the connections. Run away! No. Nope. Hot plan. Oh, hey. I'm like, the virus. Stop. No. Go away. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Run away. No. Okay, now you figured it out. No. Okay, just double checking. Nope. <laughs> this was fun. I'm like, this is the part of, the, of it where I'm like, oh, thank God. And now I have to wonder. Wonder what? Did you save her? What's the first thing I said when she shows up at the battle? I said this was the scene where I fell in love with Undyne. She's such a cool character. I'm like, I... Is that really a bias of me? Just to be like, no, that's exactly what you do. Just give her the water. Is that Undertale making me think of that way? Is that me making me think that way? But no, I legitimately went into the thing thinking, yeah, just give her the water. Like, I didn't even think I had other options. I thought, like, just give her the water. And I love how you, like, actually have the cup of water in your hands. They didn't have to do that, but he did, and it was great. Flash. <laughs> there it is. I solved the Undyne puzzle. But did you finish it? Uh, what? Oh yeah. There's more. Sure. You're not done with Undyne. I can't imagine, but I hope there's. That. I hope that doesn't mean I missed something. Oh, you did. I will say this much. Go back to the end of episode one. Ponder that later. <laughs> oh no. Uh, of course. Uh, of course I would just... There's still time to fix it. Okay, good. Hotland is so much fun. <laughs> I got real worried. Screw it, let's go check it out. I was like, oh god, I hope I don't get stuck at wherever I'm going. There is a chance that the boat is actually Temmie. What? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It's just a random chance that the boat will be Temmie. <laughs> I thought about staying in Snowden and getting something done, but I didn't. I figured I'm already getting close to the end of the episode by now, so okay, I'll just go back and make some more later. Yeah, there's not much use for backtracking yet. Oh, well, well. And see, like if you miss Temi Village, you'd be like, "Hey, Temi Village," and you're like, "Oh, okay." Mm-hmm. That kind of gave me a a a, a a a Kappa vibe from Animal Crossing. Eh, kind of. Just the idea of someone like sailing a boat and saying stuff. Mm -hmm. And the laboratory. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's you? Question mark. Me realizing, okay, everything's near the walls, evidently. So this... Is interesting. I, 
Alphys is is she's interesting. I I can't say that I like her, but I respect her. She's endearing. If anything. I mean, how endearing can someone who's been, like, stalking you be? And look, the irony is not lost upon me that we can't really make fun of a character for watching my entire journey through Undertale, as that's exactly what we've been doing. <laughs> and See, rooting for me all the my, same. My issue and something that you're probably not going to find is Alphys's past. I see. Alphys's past has a lot to do with how I feel about her. I see. Well, maybe that'll be something I'll have to look out for. I was like, well... All right, I guess this is a thing. Oh no. And this guy. Oh yes. That's the robot the papyrus used to set that floor trap. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, he's back. I have to admit, I had a little bit of fun. This was really cute. Metaton is by and far my favorite character. Really? Yes. <laughs> Screaming is a good rule. <laughs> I love this, I'm like, uh... Did you find the answer? Absolutely. I was really hoping it wasn't gonna like meta me and like trick me into thinking something. But uh, so far it was fairly easy to get through. Far, I think. I don't know if I messed it up any time. I can't remember actually. Oh, I uh, I actually tried <laughs> tried figuring it out. Not gonna lie, this is why I, I take so long. Did I notice the timer counting down? Yeah, super quickly. I'm like, ow! But I was legitimately trying to like seeing if I could just like round the numbers and give it like you know the college try. Let's see if I get this one right. <laughs> Did you see where the answer was, though? No, actually, I didn't see it. Watch Alphys. That annoyed me, by the way. <laughs> Watch Alphys. I'm watching Alphys. Yeah, I mean, that I probably shouldn't have gone wrong, I assume. I see it now, but I didn't see it then. Correct answer to that, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna guess Undyne. But, yep. Yeah. 
Everyone seems to have a crush on Undyne, so I guess that's a thing. Depending on your actions, it could be canon. Huh. That's interesting. Well, that certainly was something. Yeah, that silver door on the wall. Uh huh. That's where you learned about Alpis. We'll have to check that out next time, though. That's for sure. You can't. Oh, I can't. You can't. Oh. That was a weird noise. <laughs> well, we'll just have to see how the rest of the story goes and next time at least. I know we're getting close to the end here. Well, how, how far would you say we are in the game so far? Um, you have Hotlands Part A and B. Um, I say that because there's, um... Muffet, Metaton, and the core. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the core, I can't really elaborate too much just sure. yet. Sure. But you've got a ways to go still. All right. That I would good. say I would say depending on how how you do, I'd say about three more episodes, two yeah. or three. That's not too bad. Two if you're good. All right, then we'll just have to wait and see. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>